Hello! How's everybody doing today? You get your snacks? Go get your snacks. Okay. So, gonna do a follow up on that timer today. Got it installed. I think it is working now. So, I'll give you a quick run through of it, or I'll try to. Um, got two buttons now. This one turns it on, this one turns it off. Nice and simple. Uh, after you turn it on, it will shut off automatically on its own after an hour. So if I go AFK, after an hour, the spiders will stop spawning. So that they don't uh, build up to the point where they cause extreme lag in my game or possibly even crash it. That was the whole point of this. So haven't really tested it yet. You can hear them spawning. So, after an hour, it should shut off on its own, is the idea. And you know the wiring is going to be really good because I put a lot of thought into this. Right? Nope. <laughs> oh, it's a disaster back here. Because, yeah, when I built the prototype, I should have built the whole thing, the buttons and everything, but I didn't. Some things turned out different than I was expecting, and I ended up just doing a patch job down here so everything's a mess because uh need to add a few things i didn't realize all right so i'm gonna try my best to explain the wire setup here uh i won't go into super detail you can check out last episode if you want more information about this uh, timer concept and everything but this is the way i set this up so this wire here connected to all the pressure plates and everything. It's always on when the timer is running and it's always off when the timer is not running. So if this if this wire is on, that means we want the spider spawning. So it's dark in there. That's what we want. So I could have connected that directly to the lighting system, but if I did that, I would have no way of controlling like being able to turn uh, the spawning off like if the timer's running unless I used a lever to override it or something but then I have to play around with flipping it and, and stuff like that and I wanted to use buttons just because they're a little bit fancier but the thing is if I use buttons I need this combo here I have an RS nor latch over here and also an AND gate uh, the AND gate's connected to the RS nor latch, one side of it, and this wire is connected to the other torch. So this basically controls whether or not we let uh, this current pass through. So this is the override to shutting the spawning off if we want it off. Okay. And um, a lot of people were wondering why I don't just took this last torch. Uh, like this is the first dispenser here. It's, it's activated by this torch below. This is the first one. It goes along. Ooh, that's six of the dispensers. Then it wraps around and goes to this other side. And it makes its way back. And that's the full 12 dispensers for the hour timer. I can't just hook up uh, this torch to the RS nor latch because if I do that, we have an issue where this no longer becomes resettable correctly. So, for example, if 40 minutes were to pass, uh, our spider eyes would make it up to something like around here, right? And say I was AFK for those 40 minutes, I come back, I decide I'm going to kill the spiders then I hit the on button to reset the timer for a full hour and then this dispenser shoots out the item but what's gonna happen is we would still have that other spider eye over here and in 20 minutes it would make it to the end and uh, the spider thing would get shut off in 20 minutes instead of the hour like we want so that's the whole point behind having to use this uh, main wire here and not just connecting to the last one just to get it resettable 
And yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say for now. Uh, I'll probably be putting my world up for download again soon. I'm thinking episode 150, so you can check this out in more detail if you want at episode 150. People were suggesting I should kill the dragon at 150, so I think that's what I'll do. And I'll release the world before... Did I say world before? I hope I did. I might have said episode. <laughs> I'll release the world at 150 before I kill the dragon, is the plan. I might also um, hook up note blocks to this timer thing, so every five minutes a note block will get triggered and play a different tune, the different note blocks from each other, so that I can tell how far along it is in the timing. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun building this too, because uh, so much stuff in the way. So this is a panel right here, and right behind that is the spider elevator, so that was in the way, I had to build around it. And then over here is the slime escalator thing, so right above here where it's dripping is where the slimes go by, and also right below, like over here, is also where the slimes are, so I kind of built it in between the two layers. Oops which was fun. And I also wanted to try keep it away from the slime chambers here because we're probably going to do something with them yet. So that is the timer. And uh, I think we're going to start on today's project. I said I had a even fancier timer that we were going to build for the blaze farm. So we'll start that. I think it's actually going to be smaller and better than this one. This one ended up being a lot bigger than I expected. I think this uh, other one's going to be a lot cooler. So I'm going to get ready and we will start building it. Oh yeah, one more thing I wanted to mention really quick about this timer. Uh, I got it set up for the full hour right now, but if I ever decide I want to make it shorter, it should be pretty easy to do. All I have to do is remove the items from the last dispensers and then I think it'll shorten it five minutes each one I remove them from and uh, that's also what the these levers were about by all the dispensers I don't know if this will work or not but I think I might be able to override them just by sending power to it instead of removing the items but I haven't tried so I don't know for sure alright so I think we're ready to start building our fancy timer here uh, once again, we're going to build a prototype first so that we can uh, make sure we get the wiring all nice and clean when we build the actual thing at the blaze farm. And uh, if we have to figure things out, which I'm sure we'll need to, because this, uh, this is actually a pretty complicated thing. I took a look at it again, and it's going to be it's going to be a challenge. Uh, if we have to modify it, we'll have space to work outside here instead of having to dig through nether rack and stuff to make more space for us to test things out when we actually build it. Okay, so let's begin. This is uh, the first thing we're building here is the block swapper. So this is the most difficult part of the build and lucky for us it's actually been built before. I have it in my creative world and I took a look at it so I have it fresh in mind and we just basically have to copy it over here and then once we do that we have to modify it to modify the block swapper into a timer and that's going to be the tough part so this is like the GUI for the timer the graphical interface um, we've got buttons here pressing this button will subtract the time by five minutes and pressing this one will increase it by five minutes that's the plan for that. Uh, below here... I took a look at the redstone on this thing and I don't even understand it. <laughs> I don't know if I knew what I was doing when I built it, but I sure don't know how it works now. It's really, really weird. Got an efficiency 4 shovel. Pretty nice. Okay, so... 
have a block here. Um, yeah, so a new patch is coming out soon. L looks very cool. Lots of changes, too. They've really been working hard at that. Got the AI changes, and I saw there's going to be lamps and stuff. Um, the lamps, I really liked how they implemented them, too. It's uh, it's like glowstone, but if it's only it's only light if it's powered, which is cool. I like how there's no particles or anything. Uh, not a big fan of uh, light that emits particles. It's kind of why I'm avoiding torches in the cave. Yeah, yeah. We got the AI. We got uh, new map heights, new map uh, format. That's pretty cool. I like how it's going to be a lot more efficient. So stuff should load faster in multiplayer and all that, which is good. Those kinds of changes are drastically needed. I'm kind of sad, though, about one thing, and I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Um, MC Edit is no longer supported, which is really sad for me. Because I've been working on the map a lot lately, the CTM map. I've actually become kind of addicted to working on it. People have been wondering why I haven't been re releasing tutorials and stuff. It's because uh, most of the creative stuff and new stuff I've been making is in the the CTM app, and I don't want to spoil the things I've made. So I think I counted right here. Oh, we need regular pistons. Oh, dang it. Hmm. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six. There, I need pistons there. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, the CTM map is going very well, but I still have a lot left to do on it, so don't expect it anytime soon. Um, when you see it, you'll kind of understand why it's taking me so long. There's a lot of very complicated things going into it, and each of those takes a very long time to make. Even though I'm pretty quick at making most things, uh, still have to tweak them and make sure they work for such a small, small part of the map. It takes a long time to work out. But uh, I can hardly wait to see how people react to some of the things I put into it, which is why I've become very addicted to working on it. Um, what are we missing here? But yeah, I'm kind of sad about the MC Edit thing because now I don't know what I should do if I should wait on working on my map or I don't know because I need it. I really do. I uh, I could probably continue it, but then I just can't take advantage of the the new height of maps. I'll just have to stick with the 128 block limit or something. Okay, what are we doing here? So, let's see here. These are, um, what do you call them, monostable circuits, these things here and here. Um, this controls this piston, which uh, pushes a block out into our, uh, <coughs> excuse me, out into our uh, interface here. And the only thing we have to do now is hook up uh, these to our pistons, and that's going to be tough. So I will do that off camera, and I'll see you in a few more minutes. Uh, that wasn't too bad. I took a screenshot of the one I had built already and just copied that. Went really quick. This is the wiring here. Just give you an overview first. And then maybe I'll explain it more later. So this is all just to control the pistons, all this wire I added. Um, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. I don't think I've ever seen it without the blocks in, like what the pistons do. So there, there's supposed to be 12 blocks at the bottom row here and 12 at the top row for 24 total. If you press the left button, they're supposed to cycle counterclockwise. And if you press the right button, they're supposed to 
cycle clockwise. All right? This is what happens when you press the left one. Pistons go crazy on the left side and also on the right side. All so all eight go at once. And same if you do the right one. They, they all kind of spaz out like that. All due to the fancy redstone that doesn't make much sense. So I'm gonna put blocks in here and hopefully it works. Uh, this, like I said, this is a very weird setup I have for it, and I'm hoping there's no like directional issues or anything like that that's going to prevent it from working. This block swapper I made originally back when 1.8 was uh, being developed, when I said goodbye to my old world. What I was doing is I was trying to make something really fancy for my for a new storage room when I started my LP up again. And uh, the idea was I would have 12 different blocks to select from with the block swapper. And I could cycle through them with these buttons. And then when I picked one I wanted, I would press a button and then they would fall from dispensers above. That was kind of the idea I had for the storage room, but it just cycled too slow. So let's see if it works even. Uh -oh. It's going the wrong way. Ah, dang. It's only going right. Hmm, I might have made a mistake somewhere. Okay, I'll have to play around with this and hopefully fix it. Okay, this is frustrating. It's it's built exactly the same as the original one I had, but it's behaving differently. So I think it's a directional thing. Uh, our F is 1 here. I'm going to go to the creative world where I have the original just to show you how it's supposed to work. And I want to check what direction I have it built there. The issue is the fancy redstone thing over here because the inputs share the same wire so I'll have to separate them but that means I'll probably have to space some things out to make it work so anyway let's go to the creative world okay here we are in the creative world this is where this is the original one I built a few months ago uh, the one that actually works and oddly enough it's it built at the same direction F1 but for some reason, even though it's exactly the same, it behaves properly, unlike the other one. So, this is what it's supposed to do. You can cycle left or right. Choose your block. Um, and just to prove it to you, the redstone is exactly the same over here. It's, they st the inputs still join together. But, uh, yeah. Oh well. I will adjust the other one and hopefully get it working. Well, I don't know what to do here. I think today's episode's going to be a bit of a flop because this stupid thing doesn't want to work. It just doesn't like me today for some reason. Um, problem I'm having. So there's just not, not enough space to work. And if I I make that adjustment here so that these wires are separate, it becomes very difficult to attach to this torch here in the middle. And if I use repeaters or any other sort of delay, uh, it just doesn't want to work anymore. So this doesn't work with repeaters. And... I had to move these whoop had to move these over one block each just to make this work and this doesn't work. So and I kinda need the space over here to hook up to convert this into a memory thing. Ah oh, so yeah, I'm a little frustrated with all this. And just to show if I get rid of the the effect where it pops out, which I really like. Uh, it does work, 
but oop, for some reason it's oh, I can't even get out of here. Parkour. If it's not popped out, we'll cycle. Um, it's going the wrong way though for some reason. Oh, it seems to be jammed now. There we go. <laughs> it's just really buggy for some reason. I don't know. The original worked fine. I think uh, if I'm to get this working, I have to get rid of these vertical pistons. I have to lay everything out horizontally because the piston glitches are, I'm sure, having an effect on this. Oh well. I think I've messed around with this enough today. I'll give you, I'll go over the idea behind behind this with you though before we end this. Uh that's what this rainbow wool here is for. Each of these was going to represent visually represent 5 minutes. So this would be like 0 minutes, this would be 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way up to I think 55. Um and I could either add or subtract the minutes using these buttons this would subtract this would add and I was gonna have a memory convert this into a memory system by making one of the visual entries a glowstone block or a glass block so one of these would have to be glass or glowstone and then I'd have um, so even though this is 24 blocks here. I'd only have 12 different ones. So two of them would be copies. Um, yeah, I can't even show it with you with this. But basically, if you send power into a glass block, it doesn't l let power through, unlike the other blocks. So that way you could detect what one you're on, uh, which one is number zero, or zero time. Um, you would hook that up to the spawning light system and then you would also have a timer system. I was going to use dispensers, one dispenser and every every five minutes it would subtract five minutes from this so it would be equivalent to pressing this left button. So it would have allowed me to freely control the time on the thing because I could add or subtract the time as the timer is running and when I would do that uh, the five minutes would reset on the dispenser and yeah I had it pretty much all figured out but I was expecting this to work and it's just not working today or for me so I'm going to take a break from this today I will end the episode here and I might scrap this project. Depends how I, f how I feel about it next time I start recording. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.